Subutai's life was a legendary tale of conquest stretching from Asia to Europe. Revered as an unmatched military tactician, he never experienced defeat, pioneering tactics that influenced warfare for centuries. Directing over 20 campaigns, he conquered more territory than any other commander in history, leaving an indelible mark on the course of history. While his passing was celebrated in many lands, his legacy lives on in the timeless stories of Central Asian peoples. Born in 1175, near the Onan River, Subutai was destined for greatness from the moment he drew his first breath. He mastered the art of horseback riding and archery at an early age. But it was not just his skill with a bow that set him apart. It was his keen intellect and unmatched strategic prowess that would soon catch the eye of a certain warlord, a man who would change the course of history forever. Sobatai's family had a long-standing connection with Timuchin, with his father said to have supplied provisions to Timuchin and his followers during their crisis at Lake Baljuna. Additionally, his elder brother, Jelma, held the rank of general in the Mongol army and was a trusted ally of Timuchin, rescuing him when he was severely wounded during the process of unifying the Mongolian steppe. Despite these close ties, Subutai's career serves as a testament to the meritocratic principles of the Mongol Empire. Born into a common family headed by Yarchigadai, who was believed to be a blacksmith, Subutai's remarkable rise to prominence highlights how one's skills and achievements, rather than noble lineage, dictated success within the empire. He left his clan at the age of 14 to join Timuchin's army, following in the footsteps of his older brother Jelma, who joined when he was 17 years old. He got to the highest level of command available to someone who was not related to Genghis by blood. The Great Khan referred to him as one of his four dogs of war. During his teenage years, he was appointed to the prestigious position of Genghis Khan's door guard. This opportunity let him listen to and later join Mongol strategic discussions in his late teens and early twenties. Swiftly rising through the ranks, Subutai's talent for warfare soon caught the eye of Genghis Khan himself. In 1197, at just 22 years old, Subutai got his first chance to lead independently during an operation against the Merkit. Assigned to attack a Merkit camp along the Qin River, he chose to go alone despite Genghis Khan offering extra elite troops. Disguised as a Mongol deserter, he tricked the Merkits into thinking the main Mongol army was far away, causing them to lower their guard. This allowed the Mongols to easily surprise and capture two enemy generals. Subutai's daring move showcased his tactical genius, earning him recognition. He further proved his skills as a commander during the vital 1204 battle against the Naaman, solidifying Mongol dominance over Mongolia. In 1217, Genghis Khan sent Subutai on a crucial mission to eliminate the threat posed by the Merkits and their allies, the Cuman Kipchak Confederation. Subutai's successful campaigns in 1217 and 1219 demonstrated his exceptional military prowess and strategic thinking. His use of deception, such as disguising his vanguard as fleeing families carrying children's toys, highlights his skill in outmaneuvering the enemy. This clever tactic played a pivotal role in the decisive victory at the Battle of the Chem River in 1219, showcasing Subutai's ability to innovate and adapt to achieve victory on the battlefield. In 1219, he led the Mongol invasion force moving into Central Asia. Following their initial successes, Genghis Khan assigned Subutai and Jeba to chase the fleeing Shah of Khorasan. They relentlessly pursued him to the shores of the Caspian Sea, where the Shah, fell to illness before they could capture him. Remarkably, rather than retreat, Jeba and Subutai embarked on a bold venture. They destroyed the Georgian army and the nomadic Cumans, then turned their attention to the Rus. The Russian princes formed an alliance with the retreating Cuman Confederacy, pooling together an 80,000-strong force to confront and defeat the Mongols. Despite facing overwhelming odds, Subutai strategically sacrificed a contingent of 1,000 soldiers from his rear guard. This maneuver effectively lured the coalition army into blindly pursuing him, ultimately leading to their division and vulnerability. 
The plan proved effective, yet its strategic advantage came at a significant cost. The 1,000 soldiers were led by Jeba, who met his demise at the hands of Kipchaks during the operation. As intended, the coalition army pursued the Mongols, and after a strategic retreat spanning nine days, Subutai executed a decisive maneuver, swiftly turning to defeat the combined Rus and Cuman forces at Kalka on May 31, 1223. Despite achieving the decisive victory over the enemy force, Subutai made the strategic decision not to pursue the conquest of Rus territory. Instead, he opted to return to Mongolia. From 1226 to 1234, Subutai played a crucial role in the campaigns against the Tangits in Jurchen. In early 1227, he contributed to Genghis Khan's efforts to conquer Jurchen territory along the Wai River, during which Genghis Khan passed away. Undeterred, Subutai continued the conquest of the Jurchen between 1230 and 1234. Despite facing initial setbacks, the Mongols secured three decisive victories against the Jurchen forces in February and March 1232. However, it took another two years to fully suppress resistance. Finally, in the summer of 1234, Mongol forces captured the Jurchen capital, Kaifeng. The Supreme Commander's next endeavor was to lead the Mongol invasion of Russia and Eastern Europe. The campaign commenced in 1237 with successful attacks against the Kipchaks and Bulgars. Then he orchestrated a winter assault on the Rus cities, seizing Vladimir and Ryazan. Over the subsequent two years, the Mongols systematically raised numerous cities in Rus, including Chernigov, Vladimir, and Kiev, which succumbed in December 1240. In 1241, Subutai initiated operations against Eastern Europe. One of his most remarkable achievements occurred when the Mongol armies under his command defeated a combined force of Poles, Germans, and Czechs at the Battle of Legnica on April 9, 1242. Just two days later, they decimated the Hungarian army at Moi. Ogedai Khan's death put an end to further westward expansion. Subutai and the remainder of the army had to return home to participate in the selection of the new Great Khan. At the age of 71, Subutai was entrusted with the command of the new Khan to lead the campaign against the Song dynasty from 1246 to 1247. After concluding his participation in the Song campaign in 1248, he settled in Mongolia, spent the rest of his days near the Tul River, where he passed away at the age of 72.